a very good day and welcome my dear undergraduate students to the wonderful world of pathology or in fact it could be called a wonderful world of suffering pathos means suffering and this is rats my logo which means racing against time for students today's class shall be on these headings or subheadings think of the subheadings the subheadings will take you to the answer but in this class there shall be no question proper that will be dealt with. it is more of an introduction everything is pathology except for indifference a nice quote a genius who may always adore andreas vesalius who exhumed the bodies to study human anatomy such was his contribution that his name will be there as long as mankind is these people belong to the older era after which came the so called modern era starting with rudolf hertz the father of pathology against his name stands many a finding that are enumerated here perkos notes perkos triad cordoma ochronosis etc and this is his monument elimechnikov he was a russian zoologist and he was the founder of the process of phagocytosis or self eating there are other things such as spinocytosis the brownian movement chemotaxis etc all these come due to the hard work and observations of such people and this is a cell that is performing the phagocytosis and these are the vacuoles that we see again our rudolf hertz the father of pathology as he was studying the samples this is a normal blood smear that we see routinely he came across something different there was a smear and it contained bizarre large cells about 4 to 5 times the size of the rbc they had large nuclei definitely they were not the normal cells that we usually find in the peripheral blood and this was his discovery of leukemia and hence the word white blood leukos means white another gentleman who may always have in my heart sir william mosler he used to say many things such as as is your pathology so is your medicine he was a physician a british physician from canada and there are a lot of his contributions which definitely you people should look into an eponym is a finding which stands against a person's name oscar oscar snow oscar sign etc get another person a contemporary of rudolf hertz this is ludwig hashoff there are many things that hashoff himself has discovered and for example the hashoff nodule that we talk about in rheumatic heart disease was his finding this of course was his memorial and he belonged to berlin all these countries such as berlin prussia russia and germany they were all together and many of the earlier founders of pathology were from such regions and this is a tumor called a teratoma in which there is a protruding structure which is called the rokitansky's protuberance 
or the rokitansky ash of protuberance what the teratoma is we shall see at a later date and look at this picture my dear students this is a higher magnification that we see so there is a general view of a museum where the dead are teaching the living those days specimens such as the heart the brain the various tumors that were removed are all stored in such museums and we can very well appreciate the interest that is shown by the creators of this museum when i come to the diseases in pathology so far i had given you some kind of a historical background now what are the different types of diseases that we can see in pathology after all pathology is something abnormal you had seen the normal anatomy and physiology and its biochemical counterpart in the first year but here there is something called as occupational disease this is a classical example of asbestosis there are many people working with this asbestos fibers in various industries and they develop a disease called asbestosis affecting the lung then the pleura etc and we will be able to find such dumbbell shaped structures which are called the asbestos bodies this is just an example there are dozens of diseases which come under the occupational diseases infectious diseases this is the hallmark tuberculosis and nobody in india can say that he does not know tuberculosis so there is a kind of wasting poverty above and plenty below because the patient can develop anasites etc and the specimen of the lung it is showing cavitation there are areas of consolidation which are patchy involving the epical lobes classical of secondary tuberculosis and this is the lowenstein jensen medium with a positive culture microscopically we will be seeing structures called the granulometer and the lymph node itself it displays areas of necrosis or destruction again infectious diseases itself they are numerous so much so that a separate branch called microbiology has been recent from pathology immunological diseases here again there is something different i hope you people have at least an idea of it now that there is a covid 19 that has been rampant until recently this looks almost similar to it and this is the human immunodeficiency virus or the hiv in the late 1980s onwards it was plaguing the entire world and many a person has succumbed to it we will stick the, to the word immunodeficiency and it is a chimpanzee they thought that it has arisen from this because of the handling by the zoo keepers also you find that it can lead to multiple diseases which are not otherwise seen the same patient can be having see this for example it is a case of mucormycosis this is the conidia or the stalk and this is the sporangium and the spores are being dispersed a person can get affected by it but then we all are all exposed to it but we do not develop it in a case of a person who is immunologically suppressed he is prone for it a mucormycosis the same patient can again display this is a pyothorax within the pleural cavity i find that there is a litter of pus that has been there almost covering the entire lung also the patient can display other findings such as a kaposi's sarcoma 
So this is a gross picture of it or a clinical picture. And this is a microscopy of a Kaposi sac. This is just to give a glimpse of it. I shall be taking a detailed class on HIV. Neoplasia, which means new proliferation or new growth, cancer. So this is a wonderful specimen of the gastric cancer. And this is the microscopic counterpart wherein I am finding a lot of vacuolated cells called the signet ring cells. Along with pathology grew the various technologies such as the endoscope. Endoscope is a tube wherein you find that it can be introduced, the person can view through it and also there is a provision for taking a biopsy. All this can be monitored onto a computer. And today such is the precision that they are almost 99.9% .9 correct in the diagnosis. Thanks to WebPath for these beautiful pictures. Hematology, all of us know, is a separate branch. So in this, it is a disease of blood. See what has happened. A patient has been having a chronic recurrent leg ulcer. And when the blood was examined, they found that there were abnormal cells in the shape of a sickle or a hammer. And it is a case of sickle cell anemia, wherein there can be an obstruction to a blood vessel leading to ulcers. Hematology, this is just one example, but then there are so many others. The leukemia, the various types of anemias, the bleeding disorders, and so on. So, in this, I find that there is a microtome. A microtome is an instrument that is used for cutting the sections. Delicate sections will have to be cut from the surgical specimens so that we can examine them and then make a diagnosis. Look at this, the specimen is over here and this is a blade and they cut the section. Also note the difference between the ancient and the modern microtome, an instrument that is used for cutting the sections. And when I say pathology, it is not just putting something under the microscope and seeing. Of course, that has to be done. This is a routinely used hematoxylin and eosin stain. All these are pictures of the human glomerulus. So I find that there is a glomerulus and these are the renal tubules, HNE stain. But then there can be special stains such as the meson strichome, as is used over here, which can study the various components of the human tissue. Also, you find that if you still have doubt, there is something called the electron microscope which gives you a much higher version of the delicate details. This, of course, is a schematic picture showing the epithelium with the foot processes or the podocytes. And this is the endothelium. And this itself is a capillary. The glomerulus is a tuft of capillaries. Something that you people can logically remember. Also, I find that not all is very clear to the human eye and the mind. Therefore, we use a technique called as immunohistochemistry. We use antibodies against the various tissues. And when it matches, you find that it gets stained. And that process is called as immunohistochemistry. That is used for the diagnosis of various tumors, which are because there is a plethora of pictures that can be there, making pathology quite confusing and challenging. Will you people accept that this is a microscope? This is the Leeuwenhoek's microscope earlier. And I had also mentioned something called the modern era. What is a microscope now? Look at this one. It is not just one microscope, but then you find that there are multiple heads. It can be pentahead with five microscope, decahead with 10 micro microscopes, etc. So you find that many people can study it and also they can be loaded onto the system. And these can be telepathologists anywhere to the world. 
and other people. You can, in fact, conduct a conference or get your doubts clarified. So compare this and this. And indeed, this is the gentleman who found many an organism using this microscope. Antony von Leeuwen. The electron microscope that I was narrating earlier, this is the picture of it. It is too much for you people, but just have an understanding of it. But see, I showed you a picture of the RBC earlier, but it is the same RBC. I am finding the undulation, enlargement in the size, and these small pebble-like structures are supposed to be malaria parasites. The final diagnosis. Those days, it always used to be said, the pathologist will give the final diagnosis. And it is based on that, that a wonderful book has been written by Sir Arthur Hale. The final diagnosis. It is a story of a staff nurse in a hospital developing a swelling in the knee joint. A biopsy is taken and there are two pathologists who are studying them. One says it is benign, the other has malignant. Sections are cut. They are sent to two different people in different parts of the world. One comes as benign, the other is malignant. The senior pathologist in the hospital gives a diagnosis of malignancy and an amputation is being done. The tumor is removed. It turns out to be malignant. The senior pathologist was correct. So that is the story of the final diagnosis. Courtesy Mayo. Aspiration and biopsy. Not always a biopsy needs to be taken. This is a breast, there is a lump over here and a needle is being put in. Just like your blood, you aspirate some material and that is smeared onto a slight stain and study. That is called cytology. Fine needle aspiration cytology. Or at times, we remove part of the tissue. This is called as biopsy. And it is being sent. See what happens. So this again, sometimes I can see the mass or feel the mass and do the aspiration. At other times, it has to be guided with the help of an ultrasound. And an ultrasound guided aspiration is being done from the kidney or it can be any retroperitoneal tumor or what. Coming to the biopsy, it is sent and there is a pathologist over here. There is a surgeon who is removing the nodule. And they are sending it. They do not know what to proceed with. If it is benign, they will be doing a vast surgery. If it is not a tumor, they will not be doing any resection. And if it is malignant, they have to do a corresponding treatment. And it is immediately subject to examination under the instrument called as cryostat. Cryostat they freeze it and they rapidly cut it. Within minutes, the section is ready. The pathologist gives a diagnosis and the surgeon is able to proceed. With it. So this is the story of the frozen section, mainly meant for diagnosing a tumor as benign or malignant. Exfoliation. These are leaves that are being shed. Similarly, from our various body cavities, the cells are being shed. So this is the human uterus and the cervix from which the cells are being removed by using a brush and can be studied. It is called as exfoliative cytology. Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. William Moss. It is much more important to know what sort of a patient has a disease rather than what sort of a disease the patient has. So his analysis used to be superb and many a diagnosis and clinical signs and symptoms bear his name. Coming to the temples of knowledge, the various institutes. This is the Grant Medical College at Mumbai. A few institutes where I had studied or got trained. So this is Jipma in Pondicherry. I need not go into the details of it. You people know for yourself. And this, of course, is the Christian Medical College, Vellore. The Cancer Institute in Chennai, Adaya. 
and thousand spoon so these are all institutes that are done or rendered a dedicated service to mankind and so also this banyan tree that stands at the kilpak medical college a college of my undergraduate just like these adventitious roots we are the doctors who have evolved from the main banyan tree it is indeed a pride for me to work in this great institute for nearly 20 years the srm medical college and the srm hospital it is really a great structure that is coming up structurally functionally and on the academic front good teachers know how to bring the best out of each student charles kural this is a very famous hunterian muse john hunter was another person who has contributed such person or personalities i shall be repeatedly touching upon and look at this one a wonderful assembly of specimen almost every medical college will be having it and it is up to us to go to these and find out what the specimens will teach us they will talk to you they will explain only thing we have to listen and observe can you imagine that it is a slice of lung tissue that has been removed under the microtome this is called a guff ventwerth section the entire slice or section of a lung has been removed and it can be studied under the microscopy jipper itself has got many such mounted in its museum my business is not prognosis but diagnosis i am not engaged in therapeutics but in pathology strangely this person hl mentor is a journalist he is not a doctor or a pathologist by profession but then he has had such a feel of the subject and the profession that he has made this quote kindly go to it he has made many a quote which are worth pondering up gracious thank you for your very patient listening i hope i had given you a broad overview of what pathology is the details we shall be seeing in the subsequent classes